The regime claims that there's now growing support for their revolution and, as proof, have brought us to see a bus factory in the city. Here, we're told, workers put in a voluntary half-day without pay once a week to help in the struggle against the counter-revolutionaries. They're adapting Russian lorries and turning them into buses for the Afghan army. What the workers make of the accompaniment of revolutionary speeches is difficult to tell. They're lectured about land reform and the dangers of foreign intervention in Afghanistan, but can't be trusted to leave the premises without being searched. The regime's constant theme is that there's a conspiracy in the West which is trying to engineer its downfall by infiltrating weapons. This is Radio Afghanistan calling Europe. This is Radio Afghanistan Kabul and here is the news. 43 cases of bullets for 303 Borgans and Egyptian Kalashnikov, 11,300 other bullets of various types including rocket launchers and mines, and 170 various types of weapons, 45 mortar shells, light and heavy machine guns, typewriters and cameras have recently been seized from the counter-revolutionary bandits in different parts of... And the other main story in this bulletin is an allegation that in a laboratory in Pakistan, the CIA are breeding mosquitoes to spread disease in Afghanistan. This one's here. In Kabul, the Museum of Weapons, allegedly captured from the counter-revolutionaries, is an obligatory visit for all newcomers. Certainly, many of these guns were made in the West, but there's nothing in this collection which is particularly powerful or sophisticated, and many of these weapons could well have been around in the Afghan mountains for years. Here is the military base of the counter-revolutionary elements located beyond our frontiers inside Pakistan. The first nucleus of the counter-revolutionaries emerged from here. The assistance of Washington provided new tasks for CIA agents in the frontier of Pakistan. The Kabul government claims that among the refugee camps in Pakistan, there are 80 military bases with CIA and Chinese instructors whose task is to train counter-revolutionary saboteurs. The evidence they've produced is not altogether convincing. These fire kindlers who wear fake beards for camouflage purposes are equipped with venomous publications and anti-people propaganda material these criminals who are opposed to the people, revolution and the country have been dispatched by their dirtiest supporters, that is international imperialism led by the American imperialism, in alliance with the Chinese, Hishmanists and the reactionary circles of Pakistan in order to disrupt the orderly and peaceful life of our compatriots. In Kabul's eyes, Western help and propaganda for the rebels is the biggest obstacle to any settlement, and they're particularly irritated by the way many Western leaders have visited camps in the border areas. There's a conspiracy against our revolution. It begins from the Washington, from the London, from the West Germany. From London? Also from London. In you see, way? for example, torture came to Pakistan. He even for the first time came to the border. Why? But what was the interesting of torture to come to our borders? You're talking about Mrs. Thatcher, the Prime Minister, when Mrs. she came. Mrs. Thatcher, the Prime Minister of the Britain, and clearly is speaking about the, our revolution. How long do you think the Russian troops will stay in Afghanistan? Well, uh, we cannot say this. At the time that uh, uh, imperialism are not uh, interfering in our country, not attacking, at the, that time, uh, yeah, troops will go to their, their country. When the promises that, we won't, that they won't uh, attack our country, then they would send their agents to Afghanistan for destruction. Then the Russian troops will leave Afghanistan. Are you seriously saying the Western countries are attacking Afghanistan? You know, uh, it is obvious, you know, uh, when some of the people who are destroying our country, when they are, uh, you know, cached by the military forces, they, they discovered, 
you know, all the guns that they had in their hands, all the machine guns and all the things, they were made in the Eastern countries. You know, they had the guns from the Germany, from America, from China, in all these countries. We have different kinds of uh, enemies. You know, they don't want our revolution to be successful. In the 19th century, Britain fought three wars in Afghanistan and lost thousands of men. Britain was worried that Tsarist Russia, which was giving practical presence even then, might encroach on the back door of her Indian empire, and so intrigued to make Afghanistan a buffer state. After spending considerable energies in the days of the so-called Great Game, attempts to pacify Afghanistan floundered in tribal uprisings and treachery. The British installed puppet leaders in the capital, but eventually withdrew and left the Afghans to themselves. Today, there's still a British embassy in Kabul, but its lifestyle has fallen on hard times, and like all Western outposts here, it's been demoted to the status of a small mission. But as the grandeur of the grounds and buildings prove, Britain once had considerable influence here. She was humbled by the same problems which now face the Russians. There are a number of uncanny parallels between what the Russians are now trying to do in Afghanistan and what the British tried to do here in the 19th century. In 1880, for instance, Lord Hartington, who was Gladstone's new Secretary of State for India, summarized the lessons Britain had learned in Afghanistan like this. As the result of two campaigns, the employment of an enormous force and the expenditure of large sums of money, all that has yet been accomplished has been the disintegration of the state, which it was desired to see strong, friendly and independent, the assumption of unwelcome liabilities in one of its provinces, and a condition of anarchy throughout the remainder of the country. Well, the Russians, for all their alleged good intentions, may well soon find that Afghan history has a habit of repeating itself.